Hey everyone. So I wanted to hop on this live um, because um, as part of my job, I have to promote myself a lot. And I have been in the midst of launching a group program. And I've also been in the midst of just a bunch of day-to-day -day grind things. But I've always taken the time to... Um, like craft my lifestyle in a certain way so that I have time to breathe and think about what I'm doing throughout the day. And I just right now feel very heavy um, from the news of this Asian American shooting, which I like as hate crimes have been increasing and I've been talking to my parents about it they're like more worried for me <laughs> than themselves even even though they're like in the demographic of um people that you know would be targeted and it's really hard right now to feel like my voice would matter or that any of this matters especially because lately just with like the social media comparison game I've been really wrapped up in my own stuff and I mean all of us have like all of us are because we're trying to figure out what it means to be young people during this time and I think especially as Asian Americans we're so taught to like really cherish and respect the sacredness of the ancestral wisdom and burdens that our parents have and you know, as a child of Chinese immigrants who you know has ties to the cultural revolution even it I've tried really hard over the last few years to especially not take my heritage for granted or take the community that I came back to from the midwest for granted and like it's just like really painful today because I don't even I, I feel like usually um I'm the kind of person that has a lot to say about social issues and even when they've hit really close to home I can still maintain this level of detachedness and I think that you know with my background as a journalist especially it's really hard to be objective um, during these times, especially my last actual Asian American Journalist Association convention was actually in Atlanta and I went and got um, Korean food in the Korean area of Atlanta. So um, I'm dreading trying to look up whether the shooting happened around that area. I've been dreading um, trying to make sense of this with community because I feel like so many of these irreconcilable differences with how people live in different realities in our country have just been on my mind for the last seven years or so. And so with all of that, the only thing I can say if anyone cares about my opinion, which like, you know, I'm tempted to say I don't really know or anything, but at the same time, I can't ignore the fact that some people out there do care about what I have to say and have even paid me to help them. I'm trying to step up and own my space as a leader by telling you that the best thing you can do today, in addition to seeking community, especially if you're Asian American with any Asian Americans you do know, would be to also consume and celebrate Asian American art. It would be to consume and celebrate our humanization. Because the biggest feeling that we probably have right now is that we feel dehumanized and that we feel like people don't care about us and that people don't value what we have contributed to this country. But like, even like today as... <laughs> I was like on the phone with my CPA feeling really just low and everything. I noticed that I actually had gotten a stimulus check payment. And you know, it's like, yeah, sure, we should be getting more and oh my gosh, things are moving so slowly. But I still couldn't help but look at that pay payment and be like, oh shit, I feel so energized knowing that I have like a few extra thousand dollars in my bank account to help me 
thrive and to help me with the work that I am doing. And I think that recognizing the presence of that emotional reaction to that stimulus payment then made me realize how much I have not been feeling like I deserve to be alive and thriving and doing what I love unless like I'm making enough money to like be secure or prove myself. And so then I was just like, I'm going to fucking take the whole day off. I don't care. Like I'm going to cancel this freaking clubhouse chat to promote my group program. And I'm going to extend like the date um, and like, you know, just uh, yeah, continue to live. And while I'm living, I'm going to be honest, I have been triggered lately that like um, I'm surrounded by a lot of white voices. But then I'm also really triggered that like when I see people of color making art, sometimes I get jealous and think that like, why am I not doing more of this? Like, why do I not have the energy to do that? But then they also don't have the energy, so it's, like, paradoxical. And I think that the best thing I can do right now is to reclaim those feelings of resentment. Is to reclaim this idea that we are all human and tied together. Um, and just really celebrate, because the only... <laughs> like, we just, you know, finished watching WandaVision, and the quote... That vision tells Wanda is what is grief if not love persevering and so by that logic we should be persevering by loving Asian art more because that is the best way to look at ourselves as dimensional and I was telling a friend who actually was promoting his YouTube video today just by chance he had picked the wrong probably day to um, do that And, you know, I, like, was, like, telling him how much I loved it, and he was like, oh, like, yeah, like, I I appreciate the enthusiasm despite, like, how sad things are, and I'm like, why do we think that sadness and happiness are a binary? They're not a binary. And I told him, I'll tell you, that just as much, there's just as much room for love and celebration as there is for sadness and grief. So, yeah, like, Today, I am celebrating just as I am grieving because only does the grief then give me the means to celebrate and understand. Like, I'm like watching my friend, you know, put himself out there and I'm celebrating that this is a humanization of the dehumanization that we've been experiencing. This is the birth just as there is like, you know, I guess death. Okay, that sounds really twisted actually, but I do think that creating is the antidote to dying right because they actually really are manifestations of the same energy all that grief and anger that we feel right now as asian americans needs to go into making art not to prove ourselves but to celebrate the fact that we're alive and i think that if we don't do that then we're letting them win because the real fight isn't even against like people it's against ideologies that we don't deserve to exist that we don't deserve to be here and so all i can implore to you is to fight this by celebrating and living fiercely as well because if you let your own soul go and succumb to the grief without expanding the perspective and honestly also understanding the need to celebrate yourself as an Asian American body, then yeah, like they will win. Like they're trying to make us feel dehumanized. They're trying to make us submit. This is a spiritual war. But the only way we're ever going to, you know, be the only way we're ever able the only way we're ever going to be able to be what our parents came here for what our parents sacrificed for is to live life fiercely and lovingly in the ways that they don't get to it's like this is a very specific attack because they're not targeting us they're targeting the our vulnerable our elderly and those people we can protect by making ourselves fortified and strong and the way we make ourselves fortified and strong is through love is through beauty is through fiercely living And so today, I would implore you to don't just grief, also live life. 
do something that makes you feel alive and inspired and passionate and like you have the strength to fight. Don't just rest, also re-energize. If we don't re-energize, then we won't have the strength to speak when we need to, to create the revolution. So I'm going to consume a lot of Asian art today. I'm going to think about the movie Minari, for example. Um, I'm going to look at Yumi Sakagawa's work. I'm going to think a lot about all my Asian American brothers and sisters who are writing, who are drawing, who are making films, who are singing, who are doing so much. Like, I think uplifting Asian American voices without waiting for permission to do that. Voices about us that are beyond the fact that we're like complaining about things. Voices that really highlight how much we're living the full human experience. And that's the only way to cure a war on our humanity is to literally flaunt it so it's unignorable. If there's anything I learned from going to school um, an hour from Ferguson when Michael Brown was shot, and if there's anything I've learned from also all the racial protests, protesting the death of George Floyd, is that something we can learn from our black brothers and sisters is that when shit hits the fan, they also throw their hands up and show people their fiercest warrior sides, the sides that create, the sides that contribute. You know, like there's so much discussion around how much they've contributed to music, for example. And I think that we can show that we're contributing in mass to be more than just a stereotype be more than just the quiet kid who sits back there, more than just, you know, the bitch worker that never gets promoted in Silicon Valley. We're more than just that. And so I think that it starts with you because you are one person in this whole network or community of Asian Americans. Reflect today on what it would mean for you to rise up and live your life more fully. What art do you have to contribute? If you think more about this, you're gonna make a ripple effect. It's going to go viral. You are the antidote to this violence. You have space to grieve, but you also have space to fight. Because they exist in tandem together. So yeah, I leave you with the fact that, you know, grief is love persevering.